with Karen Marks Adventures. Today I'm going to be canning chicken breasts. Um, what I am going to be doing is actually called raw packing. Um, we found that it's probably the easiest, most convenient way to can chicken. Um, we love it. It's probably our favorite way to eat chicken. Um, you will need a family size pack of chicken breasts. Um, you can definitely do more if you want. Um, and then about six pint size jars. Um, we choose to do pint size. We feel it's the perfect amount um, of chicken for a meal. Um, of course, you'll need um, lids and rings. You wanna make sure your lids are new. And then you'll need canning salt to add um, to each jar. So first things first, you wanna make sure all your jars are clean, um, soap and water clean. Um, or dishwasher clean. I always run my jars through the dishwasher because um, I'm constantly reusing my jars. I just feel it's um, the easiest to just throw them in the dishwasher and that works just fine. Um, and then you'll want to still steam your jars um, prior to putting chicken in them. Um, let's get started. So while I'm cutting up my chicken breasts, what I do is start steaming my jars. Um, you don't have to do this, but I prefer to. Um, just put them in your pressure cooker, um, you know, on medium high heat and let them steam for a while before you pack them. All right, so I got my jars steaming and I am going to put my lids just in a bowl um, of hot water. You don't have to do this if they're new. Um, I just always have because that's how it used to be. You're supposed to soak your lids, so. I just put them in warm water and leave them be until we're ready to put them on. You don't have to do anything with the ring. And then I am going to start cutting up my chicken breasts. All right. And you want to cut your chicken breasts up into like one inch size cubes are just fine. Um, I always just cut the white fatty parts off. Um, but you don't have to be super fancy. Just one inch size cubes is fine. So now that our jars are done steaming, you're going to dump the water out. You don't have to dry these. They can be wet when you put the chicken in them. And like I said, I'll probably only get about four pints out of this pack of chicken breasts, which is just fine. I always would rather um, get more jars ready than I need than not have enough ready. So. And when you are pressure canning, you want about two inches of water on the bottom of your pressure canner. And then I always add a splash of vinegar. It just helps your jars to come out cleaner and not have any of that kind of white residue left on them. Just plain white vinegar, just do a little splash in there. Alrighty, then you wanna just start packing your jars. And when you're raw packing, um, you can go pretty tight with them. You can, you can put a, put at least up to the one inch head space and push it down a little bit if you want to too. So. Yep. And it looks like it's going to, I'm going to do about four, four jars total. which is just fine. That means about four meals, so that's great. Okay, and now you're gonna wanna add a teaspoon of canning salt to each jar. If you're doing quart size, I would do about a tablespoon per jar. And then you wanna just wipe your jars off still I just use some vinegar wipe around them make sure you didn't get any salt on there or any um, chicken residue or anything like that make sure your lids will seal properly 
All right, and then I use my little tool here for my lids. Place them on. Alrighty, and then put your rings on. Just fingertip tight, and then a little bit further. And now you can just place these in here. I typically don't can um, unless I'm gonna actually fill it up. Um, but this is what I had for today um, for the video. And um, like I said, this will give us four meals, which is great. Um, that's just fine. So um, no no liquid goes into these. That's why it's called raw packing. So you just put them in dry, um, and the meat itself will produce enough um, liquid to actually cover up the chicken when it's all done. So um, go ahead, put your pressure canning lid on. And then before you even do this, make sure that you wash your seal and put it back in properly. Um, Cause sometimes with the, the, the previous pressure can, it can kind of get off and dirty and whatnot. So you wanna make sure you clean it and put it in again. All right, so now that we are all locked and closed, um, we can turn the burner on to high. Um, and then we wanna wait until it starts steaming. Um, once your, if you, ha it depends on what type of canner you have, but once your top pops up, you wanna go about 10, eight to 10 minutes um, before you actually put your um, pressure on. And then you wanna make sure that you check your elevation. Um, for me, I need to um, do about 12 pounds of pressure for 75 minutes since I am using pint sized jars. If you're using quarts, you need to go 90 minutes. Um, but make sure you check your elevation so you know what, um, how many pounds of pressure that you are supposed to be at. Okay, so we're starting to steam a little bit here. Um, like I said, again, you still wanna wait until your top pops up. If you have a Presto canner, this top will pop up. Once that pops up, I typically wait about eight to 10 minutes. Um, make sure that your steam flow is nice, um, you know, and not broken at all. And then you'll be able to go ahead and put your weight on. Um, so we'll just keep waiting for that top to pop up and then we can kind of start our time. All right, so I can see now that it has popped up and the steam looks like it's coming out pretty darn good now. Um, still wanna wait about five, five to 10 minutes at least um, before we go ahead and put that pressure gauge on. Okay, and now that we've waited about eight minutes, we can go ahead and put our weight on there. And now is where it gets a little bit tricky. Um, I leave I leave the burner on high until I get to about five pounds of pressure, and then I turn it down at least a couple notches. Um, you don't want it to go up too fast to 12. You wanna slowly get up there, so. Just, you know, every few minutes, keep turning that burner down a little bit. Um, for me, at 12 pounds of pressure, typically I'm at about um, three on my burner. So you wanna slowly move it down. Don't let it climb too fast. Just keep an eye on it. Okay, so we're at about five pounds of pressure. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it from um, 10 down to seven and a half. Okay, so we are at 12 pounds of pressure. We can go ahead and set the timer for 75 minutes. And again, you want to just keep an eye on it. Um, make sure that it doesn't keep creeping up. You might have to turn the burner slightly down. Um, so just keep checking on it every um, couple minutes. Alrighty, so we're wrapping up the canning process right now. Um, you are going to just shut the burner off and leave everything on the stove like so. You want to make sure that your pressure comes all the way down to zero. Um, and then you want to make sure that your top falls back in. Then you can take off your um, pressure and let it sit in there for about another 10 minutes just to equalize the pressure. And then you'll be able to take your top off. All right, so we've been at zero for probably about 20 minutes or so. My top has popped back down. We can go ahead and take the pressure off. And then I'm just gonna let it sit about five more minutes before we take it off. set to go ahead and remove our jars from the canner.
Perfect. And you just want to make sure that you go ahead and um, space them a little bit apart when you set them out. Um, you don't want to be bumping the jars or anything like that. And then you want to let them be um, for about 24 hours. So you can tell that they produce plenty of liquid on their own. So they're not going to be, um, you know, sitting in there dry. Um, a little tiny bit might be sticking out on top of it, um, on top of that fluid, and that is totally fine. And then you're going to want to leave your jars um, just set out on the countertop or wherever you take them out um, and leave them for about 24 hours. And you don't want to touch them or move them around. You want to make sure they sit so they get a nice... Um, reliable seal um, and it takes about 24 hours for that.